Members of the press, you are ready? Thank you for coming. This is uh, our statement titled, What Next After Ruto's Contempt Budget? Yesterday we saw what happens when a rogue and uncaring executive branch of government decides that the only thing that matters is their ego and their uh, agenda. We have learned the hard way that this illegitimate regime can ignore the people, their feelings, their fears, their circumstances, their hopes and aspirations, and force its agenda on the people. That is what Ruto and his Kenya Kwanzaa followers did with the passage of finan the Finance Bill 2023. They ignored the wishes of the majority of Kenyans, and this signals the era of dictatorship. We ask Kenyans to beware. We say pole to the millions of Kenyans who are struggling to come to terms with this harsh reality. We know many of you think this is a nightmare that will probably fizzle out. Unfortunately, it is here with us and here to stay unless we act now. Because we are not helpless, we can act. The Ruto regime ensured that the wishes of the people were ignored. Instead, they retained punitive taxes on fuel, on housing, on turnover, on salaries, among others. This is like showing the people of Kenya the contempt card. The people can lament, plead, pray, and even pick it to be listened to and still be ignored. This has never been seen in our country before. In the run-up to the voting on the finance bill, various polls showed that more than 90% of Kenyans rejected the finance bill. 
This kind of dictatorship is new. This budget is selfishly tailored to ensure Ruto's, Ruto and his cronies are living large and they eat well where a majority are suffering. They are getting subsidies to import cooking oil, maize, sugar, rice, among others, as we saw in the media expose recently. And this is all at the expense of vulnerable Kenyans. In this finance bill, the regime's corruption is properly budgeted for. Money for the regime's cronies is hidden in the provisions like fertilizer subsidy, national agricultural and rural inclusivity, national agricultural value chain development, Kenya serious enhancement, whatever that means, emergency locust response, and small-scale irrigation and value addition, among others. What we are saying is that if these provisions are genuine, agriculture being a devolved function, these monies would be devolved to the county, but not left at the center with lofty sounding words just to be siphoned by the corruption cartels. Where there has been inflation, we must now prepare for hyperinflation. With the new raft of taxes approved yesterday, especially the fuel tax, we must prepare that even the little that remained of our monies will simply vanish. To our MPs who fought gallantly for the people in these times of difficulty, we salute you and we celebrate you. We believe Kenyans do too. We celebrate the fact that whereas the regime had said not even a comma would be removed from the bill, our MPs, with the, while pushing for the millions of Kenyans, were able to force the regime to accept not one, not two, but several amendments. Sadly, those amendments did not include the dreaded double taxation, double rise in taxation of fuel, which is going to have a ripple effect on the cost of living. The amendments managed by our gallant MPs were not enough to guarantee the kind of life Kenyans desire. To the MPs who knowingly supported a bill overwhelmingly rejected by Kenyans, we say to you that the jury is out. Your day of reckoning will come. The writing is on the wall for this regime, and as the Bible tells us, and if I were to quote a certain member of this illegitimate uh, regime, uh, it is as the Bible says, mene mene tekel. We have decided to invite Kenyans to a consultation at the Kamukuji grounds next Tuesday, the 27th of June at 10 a.m., where the co next course of action will be decided. Whenever, as a people, we have come together, we have always found a solution even to our worst problems. This time will be no different. We believe that in the end, it is the people's voices that will prevail. The only time we have suffered longer than we should is only when we have allowed dictators to rule longer than they should. And it is only when divide and rule succeeds. We must not let that to happen. The people can never be helpless in their own country against rogue leadership. Not in a democracy like ours, and not in a, the dictatorship they are trying to create. We want to remind Kenyans our constitution in the very first article gives sovereignty to the people, which the people, even when they donate it to parliament, to the executive, or to any other organ, the people still retain the residual sovereignty which we are asking people, let us come together next Tuesday, let us decide what kind of life we want to live. Thank you and God bless. And uh, our 
His Excellency Raila Amolo Odinga, the People's President and our leader, is out on a short trip. He will be back by the meeting on Tuesday, and so is my brother, His Excellency Kalonzo Musioka. Two other principals are in Western Kenya today, that is Oparanya and Wanjakoya. But those of us who are present, we represent the entire Azimio uh, side, fraternity. Asante Nisana, God bless. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.